I guess you ain't got just what I want. That's just what I want. Well, that's very sweet. That's an import. Please send it up special this afternoon. COD, 635 Riverside Drive. And have the messenger wait if I'm a little late. Thank you. I gotta rest my dogs a little. I've been on them all day long, and half the time some copping is on them, too. Oh, so you find things hard in the hardware department. Hardware is part of my shadowy past, but the future looks bright and shiny. I suppose you have everything fixed. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. My friend Mr. Finkelwall is doing all right by our little Georgine. Finkelwall, that old palooka. Hey, he's not too old to have ideas. What department is he putting you in? The cane department. Well, what's the swell about that? It means no more carpenters. In the cane department, I'm a cinch to meet nothing but gentlemen. You ought to have a good chance to meet some crippled old man. Yeah? Well, maybe I ought to pick out a nice strong crutch and send it up to you. They tell me you fall over easily. Hello, hon. Hello, Edna. Hey, maybe if we get a raise, we can buy a new percolator for the old homestead, huh? I hope so. Where are you going, Buster? Jewelry? Ready to wear, I hope. You won't get any more there than you're getting now. But there's a commission there, and also a future. I think you're going to be a great big buyer and take a trip to Europe every year. And don't think she won't either. Say, she'll be riding those leviathans when we're still riding the subway. I suppose you've got somebody fixing your future for you, too. No. No one has anything to do with my future but myself. As long as I have just myself to look after, I'll do all right. <laughs> all right, girls. Line up. Now, before mentioning the various promotions and transfers, I want to express the appreciation of the Mayfield Company for your hearty support during the past year and ask you to consider these promotions a reward for your loyalty and hard work. <laughs> now, now snap into it, girls, and go to your departments as I call your assignments. Clerks, 1203, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 1806, 2210, Milnery. 1161, 3, 5, and 6, 1402, and 3, the stockroom. All right, come, girls, snap into it, snap into it. 1404. 1404, infants wear. 1492 and 3, lace. 1123, 4, 5, and 6, gloves. All right, that's all. Thanks. 616, plumbing supplies. 'd squawk look at me with sinks and bowls and wash basins and and uh, etc what kind of a man am I going to meet there what are you going to do about it I'm going to find that thinking wall and bust a pot right over his head looks like I'll never get away from plumbing working there by day and scrubbing here at night my life goes by in bathrooms <laughs> sounds like a song don't it Vicky and I are pals again. Did I tell you what I figured out about him? Hey, Buzz, asleep? No. You know why Pinky put me in plumbing and not in gents? Are you listening? Sure. I got it all doped out. He's jealous. Think 
Mickey. That's why he double-crossed me and Jens. He's afraid of the cane and spat trade, see? <laughs> but he knows I couldn't go for the kind of men you meet in plumbing. You ought to have infants wear. Women all day long. You wouldn't know there was a man in the world. Don't be a sill. There's a man in back of every purchase in that department. Yes. Gee, I feel sorry for those women. Some of them are only kids. Guessing whether to choose blue or pink. Poor things, pretending they're brave and happy. Well, maybe they are. Oh, how can they be when they may die? Georgine, it's terrible. For the love of... Say, you're not having one, are you? Idiot. Well, don't till we get a bigger apartment anyway. There's hardly room enough for me and a baby. Well, what I said is the truth. I know because I killed my mother. You what? Well, I... I mean, Mama died when I was born. Well, that ain't your fault, honey. My grandpa was struck by lightning. Yeah, but it does happen. Sure it does, and sure it doesn't. Look at me. My old lady had six. Yes, and what did it get her? Well, I like that, you wait. <coughs> Say, she's got me, and that'll be enough out of you, young lady. <laughs> and I know this. If kids could get me out of plumbing, I'd have triplets tomorrow. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hello, Elmer. Fine, how are you? Gee, I'm sorry I missed you the store tonight, but I got tied up at the shipping department. When I came upstairs, you'd gone. Say, if you haven't got anything on for Saturday night, I'd like to take you to the flower land and dance. Oh, thanks, Elmer, but really, I... We'd love to go, Elmer. Oh, is that you, Georgine? Why, sure. Sure, we'd be glad to have you. When? Saturday night? Sure. And who will we get for me? Well, I hadn't thought about that, Georgine. Let me see. Well, I might be able to get Wally Dennis. No, no, you don't know him. He's a swell friend of mine from uptown. Well, I'll leave it up to you. I just love a blind date. But on second thought, I don't think he'd like you very well. Oh, I don't mean that. I, I mean, maybe you wouldn't like him. Only, Elma, don't bring a plumber. All right, Georgine, I'll try to get Wally Dennis. Bye. Say, you want to grab off a swell guy like Elmer and stop being so moony. He's daffy about you. The only thing I want to grab off is a load of sleep. I'm dead. And stop reading these screwy books. Well, I want to get someplace. I want to be somebody. You don't see Peggy Joyce reading no merchandising books, and she's somebody. Her merchandise is the kind that sells on sight. This program comes to you through the courtesy of the J. Hokum Plumbing Company. Ah! <laughs> Those plumbers even follow me to bed. Oh, please, don't be so conceited. What are you going to do? Keep off of step ladders. Read them and wait. That's the last pack I got of your brand. And your stock up, give me a buzz, will you? Well, so long, Wally. I'm going to a movie. Hey, wait a minute. I glimpse this blind day. I may be with you. Oh, yeah, I'm with you, boys. That's a dame he's dancing with. The other must be worse. It's a blind date, but I'm not that blind. Look, Wally, it's that hot. Ain't that something? Say, that's good enough to keep me here all evening. It's a cent. She can't be picked up. Yeah? I got ten bucks that says I can dance with her. You're on. Thanks, honey.
pardon me, but since our mutual acquaintance seems to have failed us, may I introduce myself? Oh, you're Mr. Dennis. I'm so glad you've come. Elmer's out there dancing. Well, let's not worry about Elmer. Let's let's uh, let's think about how swell you and me and this music go together. Well, at least the music is swell. Oh, it ought to be. A friend of mine wrote it. Buster, huh? Uh-huh. And you belong to Elmer. Oh, say it ain't so, baby. Say it ain't so. It ain't, mister. It ain't. Whose little gal are you then, huh? Nobody's. Nobody's? No. Nobody, sweetheart, now? No. Never mind, little gal. Don't cry. Old Dr. Wally will fix all that. Are you a doctor? Oh, heart specialist. Let me feel your pulse. Oh, it's too slow. For love at first sight. <laughs> oh, no love at first sight? No. Well, second sight. Oh. Hey, don't you believe in love at all? You must be married. Okay, baby, you and me. Say, you're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? I wish I was half as sure of you, but I will be. The next time we meet. I don't think I like you. You're much too fresh. Don't let that bother you. I think you're swell. Elmer and Georgina are probably waiting. We'd better go. Lady, you've got an awful lot to learn, but I'll fix that. You know, this world is just full of little girls that I helped educate. Sorry, Professor, but I graduated a long time ago. Well, honey, there's nothing like a postgraduate course. Please, Mr. Dennis. Here, play this one, will you? Say, sister, I'll give you a dollar if you keep on playing that till I tell you to stop. Oh, but it's not allowed. Come on, take it. Don't ask questions. I work better with music. Don't you just love babies? Oh, yes, I'm just crazy about the little dears. Shall I charge him in his home? Uh, if you will, please. What are you doing here? I thought I told you last night. Well, I time. told you that you and me and this tune go swell together. Well, you'll have to leave. Oh, I'm a customer. You are not. Well, a prospective customer. All right, what do you want? Something nice in lingerie. You know, baby's lingerie. Or if you prefer, we'll start with something higher now, something in hats. Bonnet? Age, please. Just a minute. Uh, six months. There. There's a lovely model. Yeah, two of those please are twins. Now, aged uh, 15 months, three of those uh, triplets. Aged two years... What triplets? Do you run an orphan asylum? Certainly not. I wouldn't get up this early for any children except my own. Why don't you bring your wife down and let her pick them out? Oh, I'm not married. These are from my hope chest. Look at that. You know, what this country needs is more young men with... Uh, well, never mind. I'll let you know all about that at lunch. Oh, yes? Well, perhaps not all. Maybe I'd better save a few of the details for dinner. And what about breakfast? Well, I'm easily persuaded. Can I need any assistance? No, no thanks. I'll, uh, I'll take those with me. The $12, please. I'll see you Monday. Well, that'll be just well because I won't be here. I'm going on my vacation. Oh, that's great. Where are you going? Wouldn't you like to know? Sure, that's why I asked you. I'm very busy. Someone needs me. And I'm that somebody. as I have on this vacation. I'll be glad to get back to the store for a rest. I won't. I think it's gorgeous up here. 
Oh, I'm so sore from riding horseback with old Finky, I can't sit down. My feet are so sore, I can't stand up. All I can do is lay down. And after all, I've got to think of my reputation. <laughs> Say, what's a basket of dainties for? Going out in the woods and play Little Red Riding Hood? Wally and I are going on a little hike. Finky and I are going on a little hike, too. <laughs> About 16 miles. He used to be a floor walker, and he certainly is having a floor walker's holiday. Darling, are you doing it for love? No, I'm doing it for hate. Hate? Yes, I hate plumbers. Oh. And if I keep on being nice to Finky, he's going to get me out of that department. <laughs> Say, speaking of hiking for love, how about you and that Wally guy? Oh, don't be a nut. We're not in love with each other. No? No. I suppose he just followed you up here because he likes the fresh air. Yes. Hmm. He's stopping over at the hotel because he likes the fresh vegetables. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's not in love with you. No. And you're not in love with him either. No. Mm. You just go around with him because you like his collars. <laughs> oh, don't be silly. You know, I don't believe in falling in love. I don't believe in walking either, but I'm going on a hike with Fink. Well, don't you worry about me. There's one hike I'll never take, and that's that long one down that church aisle with the veil. Goodbye, darling. I'll see you later. Hey, look out for the grasshoppers. Wally! Wally! Am I late? Oh, no. Just an hour or so. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I was up all night. What happened? Oh, I got in a poker game with some of the boys and it didn't turn into daybreak. Well, hurry up, will you? Say, bring your records in the troll. I've got the lunch. Gee, sir, it's been a swell two weeks. You know, you're awful sweet, Wally. I didn't like you at first. I couldn't stand your freshness. But I was all wrong. That's just a pose with you. Then give us a kiss. A pleasure. It's a mighty poor brand for this day and age. Well, what kind would you like, sir? Oh, send over some samples. What kind you got? Well, I have animal, mineral, and vegetable. Oh, animal. That's a puppy dog. No more zoo. What next? Eskimo. Listen, lady, I want a kiss, not a cook's toy. <laughs> All right. There you are, a kiss of respect. How about a little affection? Affection? Well, it's getting warmer, but, uh, here, shoot at this. How was that? Oh, no technique. Why, they can do better than that in movies. Come on, Gable, get hot. Oh, Wally, don't. Don't, Wally. Well, kid, what are we going to do? I don't know. Well, I do. We're going to cut out this monkey business and get married. You're not going to turn me down, are you? Oh, no, Wally, but I didn't want to get married. Well, neither did I, but I'm crazy about you. I'm crazy about you, too. I never thought I'd fall. I always wanted to make something myself. Be somebody. Well, here's your big opportunity to make something out of me. Say, that's a job, and no kidding. Oh, come on, Buzz. We'll have fun, huh? My firm is, uh, is sending me out on new territory in a couple of months. We'll have plenty of money. We'll have a regular honeymoon, huh? How about it, baby? Come on, say yes, will you? We'll be awfully happy, Buzz. Ah, Georgine. Isn't this wonderful? Isn't this invigorating? Yeah. But after we get there, where are we? Oh, my dogs. Oh, come on, Georgine. This is great. Yeah, it's wonderful. I'm enjoying my... Oh, oh, Finky. Oh, I'm all in. Oh, let's sit down and rest. Oh, oh, sit down. There's something I want to say to you, Miss Hicks. <laughs> Georgine, if I may. Yes, Mangy. It's been my dream for a long, long time. I'm, uh, I'm building a house, Georgine. Oh, Finky. 
just a little nest in the country. And and there's something I want to ask you. What? These are the plans for the little nest, Georgine. And I want your advice on the most important room in the house. Oh, Finky. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> And you made a mountain goat out of me just to ask me that? Uh, Georgie. I don't. <laughs> I don't either, really. Are you going? Yeah, I hate to, but I got to see this bird on business. Hey, here's some dough. Do some shopping, will you? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do all that back home. You run along, darling. Don't worry about me. I'm going to write the girls. What are you going to tell them? That I'm the happiest girl this side of paradise. Goodbye, sweet. Bye, honey. It's 2 o'clock in Caliente right now. <laughs> yes, and it's midnight in Japan. Say, so how much money you got? Well, I've got plenty, darling. Yeah, well, uh, how much? Oh, $70 or so. Why? I'm broke, that's all. Broke? Flat. <laughs> I could hog something, I guess. Marty Hep. Who's Marty? Why, Wally Dennis. Did you lose your money gambling? Well, a guy can't expect to win all the time. What do you mean, all the time? Well, every day. You mean you gamble every day? Sure. How do you think I get my dough? Well, your salary, of course. Haven't you got a salary? Sure, when I win. But you don't depend on that for a living, do you? Well, Wally, haven't you got a job at all? No. I lied to you, honey. I make my money gambling. Oh. Are you mad? Well, don't worry, honey. I'll win next time. Oh, gee, hon. Oh, I was so happy, Wally. Everything was going to be so swell. Now it's all gone. Oh, it'll still be swell, boss. No, it won't, Wally. You lied to me. You even married me on a lie. Now that ruins everything. I know I lied to you, but I, I wanted you so much I'd have done anything to get you. <coughs> I didn't have a job, like I said, but I had plenty of money, and I knew I'd get more. You see, I've always been lucky. Then when I got you, it was the biggest break of my life. I had the most wonderful girl in the world, and all I wanted was to get her everything and make her happy. Didn't look as if anything could stop me. Swell clothes like that, honey. Those are the kind of things you ought to have. I couldn't get them for you on any old $30 a week job. Don't you see, I had to take chances. I was playing for the biggest stake of my life, honey. I was gambling for your happiness. With a girl like you, I just couldn't plug along year after year, never getting anywhere and always just hoping. I thought that'd kill our love. I only wanted you to be happy, and I thought if I got you everything you wanted, you would be happy. 
I didn't think that just because I got it by gambling it would make you unhappy. I didn't think I was taking a chance on losing you. Gee, baby, I lied to you to get you, but I'll do anything now to keep you and make you happy. I know I four-flushed, but I didn't think you'd give me a tumble if I didn't show you a good time. Oh, honey, I didn't want a good time. I just want to be safe. All right. I guess work won't hurt me. I know a friend of mine that'll give me a job selling. Now, how's that? I promise to get a regular job. On your word of honor? On my word of honor. All right. All right, look. Look, here's, here's 20, 20, 40, 60, 70, 75 dollars here. Now, go down and pay the bill and, and get two tickets for tonight's train. Where to, lady? Home and a job. <laughs> You're the boss. Oh. and still smiling. <laughs> oh, honestly, honey, it's just been wonderful. It must have been wonderful, the way you two have kept to yourselves. Hmm, <laughs> this is a pretty classy joint. <laughs> Where's the bunch? Oh, they'll be here in a minute. See, I thought you were going to bring Finky with you. Oh, he'll be here later. He's working. <laughs> Wait a minute, there's somebody now. Oh, hello, Elmer. Hello, Buster. Oh, hello, Edna. Hello. Gobbo's in again. Oh, come on in, Edna. Come on in. The party isn't out in the hall, you know. Give me a hat and coat. Shut the door, Elmer. Hello. Here's a little present for you, Buster. Oh, thanks, Elmer. Come on, sit down right here. Well, the honeymoon is over when you start inviting people in for company. Yeah. We just got settled, Edna. We stayed over the hotel until we found the place we wanted. Well, as I remember, you were the girl that never wanted to settle down and become a Mrs. Anybody. Yeah. Well, a girl living in a place like this has got to have a missus in front of her name to keep people from talking. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, hon. Come on, let's take your things to the bedroom. Mm, can I see the bedroom? Well, of course you can. You usually do. Yeah? Well, you ought to know. I generally meet you coming out. Come on, Edna. Oh, Buster, I like this. Say, <laughs> this is swell. Come on, let me have your hat on. Hey, don't you know it's bad luck to put a hat on a bed? You know I don't believe in depending on luck. As I remember, you were the girl who said she believed in working for what she got. You're right, Edna. Oh, Buster! Gee, this is cute. <laughs> New clothes, too. Say, I'd take the fatal leap myself if I could land into a closet full of clothes like that. <laughs> Say, this is a lot different from the old days when we only had one pair of panties apiece. Bragging again. You know, Bus... I never liked that guy, Wally. But I've got to admit, he's doing all right by you. Oh, I'll tell you. Say, we better go back to the living room. Elmer's there all alone. Come on, hon. Come on, Ed. Well, Elmer, how have you been? How's everything down the store? Oh, everything's just about the same, except, of course, we miss you. Oh, thanks. That's sweet. Now, come on, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Say, where's Wally? Working? Yes, he phoned. He might be a little bit late. Now I know the honeymoon is over. Well, he ought to be here any minute now. There he is now. That's what I call a perfect husband. Always knocks before he comes in. Oh, hello, Mr. Finkelwald. Flowers for the blushing bride. Oh, they're beautiful. I'll put them in water right away. Oh, you don't have to. They're wax. I got them off the notions counter. <laughs> <laughs> he would. Say, what made you so late? Were you waiting for their first anniversary? No, I was working. Say, why don't you two get married? He knows all the answers. Ah, oh, go pump up your bicycle. You look awfully married for a girl who was never going to marry. Oh, that was just a crazy idea of mine, darling. I changed my mind and I was all wrong. You'll find out in a couple of years you are right in the first place. Oh, oh, where is the proud young groom? He's working too, you know. Oh, quit your kidding. He is working, really. <sighs> hello. Oh, hello, sweet. Well, sure, what happened? We're all sitting here waiting for you. Well, I'm sorry, baby, but I won't be able to get there for a while. Now, I'm working on a little proposition. 
course, well, if you have to work, but I wish you were here. I feel like I was left waiting at the church steps. Well, I'll get home just as soon as I can, but uh, I just got to stick with this deal. Oh, it's a honey. I'll be seeing you. Bye, babe. All right, boys, deal me in. I can stick another half hour. Do you think your wife will mind if we deal a hand of stud this time? Oh, don't, Bob. Come on, let's have it. Cut him. Wally. Oh, hello, hon. Hey, where is everybody? Gone? Well, of course they've gone. It's after two o'clock. It is? Gee, I didn't know it was as late as that. You made it nice for me you're not coming. Tonight was supposed to be my big night, you know. I wanted all my friends to see how happy I was with all this. Well, they saw I had everything, everything except a husband. Well, I'm sorry, honey, but you explained to them I had to work, didn't you? You don't think they believe that, do you? You don't think I believed it? Well, that's a nice way to talk to a guy that's worked as hard as I have. Wally, you weren't working. You were over that gambling joint. Oh, oh I was, was now I? Now, let's not kid each other. Oh, well, suppose I was. It's all that better than talking to your noisy friend, Georgina, that puffy old Finkelbottom. That guy reminds me of a strawberry lollipop. Promise me on your word of honor you get a job and you haven't done it. Where do you suppose I get the dough to pay for this layout? You always tell me about vague propositions, but you never tell me what you're really doing. I don't want to bother you with it, that's all. No, you don't tell me because there's nothing to tell. Wally, all the money you've ever made, you've made it gambling. Listen, I've told you before, I'm not the kind of a guy that can settle down to a job. I'm not a mug like Elmer. When I bring home money, it ain't going to be in any pay envelope. It's going to be in such a big wad, you won't be able to put it in any envelope. We can't go on living like this any longer. Well, we're doing all right, aren't we? Well, it's got to stop. We can't afford to take chances. Say, listen, look at this place. What more do you want? Wally, I mean just what I said. We can't afford to take chances, that's all. I'm not thinking of us. There's something else to be considered. Oh. I went to a doctor today. A doctor? What for? What do you suppose? Oh, Buzz. Oh, that's swell. Oh, boy, I'm happy. Say, what a thrill. Well, honey, what's the matter? I'm afraid, Wally. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of. Why, millions of I women... I know, and lots of them don't. My mother didn't. She died. Oh, it's going to be all right, hon. Those things happen, but the chances are one to a million. Couldn't happen to you, Buzz. We'll get the best of everything. You'll be a cinch. But, Wally, we can't have the best of everything if you gamble all your life. Why, well, do nothing all day long with high step collectors or lie to them and shut the door in their face. We might not have a cent when the time comes. Oh, come on, honey. Come on. Come here now. I want to tell you something. We're going to have plenty of money when the time comes. Even if I have to go to work to get it. Tomorrow I'm going to get a job. Now, on the level. And you'll stop taking chances. Honey, I've stopped already. What you told me just made a change in everything. I know how you feel now. You'll do this for me, really? For you? No, sir. For all three of us. Honestly, sweet. It's a bet, baby. It's a bet. Hey! Hey! Huh? Will you have that car ready for that guy at 6 o'clock? Oh, I could have had it done an hour ago, only I thought you wanted to run up a time charge on him. Well, hurry it up. Okay. Well, today's a big day, honey. It's the day I bring home that weekly pay envelope. We saved nearly $5 last week, Wally. Yes, yeah, well, that makes nearly 100 bucks in the bank, doesn't it? You know, just as well as I do, that means $110. You know, you and that kid are going to get all the breaks, honey. Oh, gee, think what a break that kid's going to get having a father like you. Yeah, well, there's something to that if you stop to think it over. <laughs> Bye, honey. Bye, Dada. Hey, come here. <laughs> That's for you. <laughs> well, if it ain't Wally. How are you, Marty? Funny I should run into you like this. Yeah, how are all the boys over at the joint, huh? Why don't you drop over and find out? Still tied up with apron strings, eh? Oh, it ain't that, Marty. I'm just through, that's all. Through? Boy, how can you forget the time you made 12 straight passes? And the time Jakey Bright and I ran up that big pot? 
And you just kept stringing along, and then all of a sudden, Wallop took us with a straight flush. You can't forget things like that so easily. How about the time I had Southern California on the short end against Notre Dame, huh? Say, I did all right that time, didn't I? Yeah, and Firefly, that 20 to 1 shot at Latonia that came rumping home in front of the field. That didn't do you any harm either, eh, Wally? Say, those were the days, boy. Well, they're still running horse races, and I got a hot tip on the third at Belmont. A jockey over at Barney's. One, two, three, four. Four fifty, four sixty-five, five dollars. There you are. That makes hundred and fifteen dollars in the account, doesn't it? I know. Your husband drew out ninety dollars this noon. Ninety dollars? It's a joint account, you know. Oh, oh yes. There it is, honey. Old man pay envelope himself. Why didn't you gamble with that, too? What's the matter? You've taken a chance on everything else we've got. Why didn't you shoot the works? You're the guy that can't go plugging along on a salary. You're the guy that's got to shoot for big stakes. Say, wait a minute. Ninety dollars. Three months it took me to say that in nickels and dimes. Going without things I needed. And you shoot the whole thing in one day gambling. But will you listen no, to I me? No, I won't listen to you. I won't listen to any more your lies. You promised to quit taking chances for me and the baby. But you're too weak to quit. I should have married a sack like Elmer has in decency. Instead of a big funny guy like you who lies and cheats and steals. Say, you can't talk to me like that and get away with it. I don't want to talk to you. Don't want to, want to see you again. There you're closing. I'm thinking, get out. I won't get out. That kid's mine as much as yours. Yes, it's yours. But I'm through with you and everything that belongs to you. I'm not going to have another lying, gambling, rotten cheat like you. I'm through. Now get out. Hey, Buster. Packages from Mayfield. Will you sign for them, please? told him I didn't ever want to see him again. And the big fool's been gone for a week.
Well, well, they all come back. Oh, hello, Edna. How are you? I saw you going to the store this morning. I suppose you were buying some more swell clothes. Well, I got tired of sitting around the house all day with nothing to do. It's kind of nice being back. What's the matter? Doesn't your husband come home at all nowadays? While he's out of town on a business trip. Gee, if he knew I was working, he'd kill me. Well, you never did want to get married. And having a husband that's way most of the time, why, it's practically the same thing. Buster, honey, I just heard you were back. Oh, gee, it's good to see you, Georgine. She didn't have to come back. She was just playing a joke on friend husband. What a joke you'll be on your husband if you ever hook some poor sap. Listen, dearie, I'm all right, and I don't want any husband. Oh, no. You don't want a husband. No, not much. You just go around smiling at lampposts and fire plugs. What's the lowdown, kid? Anything happened? Yeah. Wally and I split. Cared more about gambling than he did about me. I don't see how that guy ever wins any money gambling. Say, he don't know a good thing when he's got it. Where is the mug? I'd like to give him a good sock on his button. I heard he went to New Orleans. Oh, I guess it's all for the best anyway. I'm not the kind that makes a good housewife, Georgie. I've got to depend on myself. I can't take chances on anyone else. Well, it's a good thing you came back. Mayfield Department Store was about to go on the rocks. Why? Oh, Pinky and I decided to stop fooling around and do that trembling act in front of a minister. Georgine, you're not going to get married. Uh-huh. Oh, Bus. I know it don't sound so good to you. But I'm getting kind of old and i got to find out what it's all about before it's too late. Well, I'm happy for your sake, hon. You know, the company's giving Pinky a route and going to send him out on the road for our honeymoon. He's going to demonstrate folding beds. <laughs> Georgine... Promise me something, will you? What? Don't let any other girls know that Wally and I broke. I'd die if they knew. Ah, uh, don't you worry about me, Bus. I understand. I won't say a word. Thanks. I'll bet your feet are kind of tired, man. Are they tired? How much oil you made? Done. Want a cup of coffee, sister? How much is this? Soup and sandwich. Fifteen cents. No, that's all. Thank you. Baby mine. Straight place a show. I want it to win. Thank you, lady. All right, now, boys. We close the book in five minutes. Get ready to ring the bell, boys. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Smith 753. I'm Marty Happ. Oh, yes, Mr. Happ. Oh, I never expected to see you here. This is the last place in the world I ever expected to be. I heard you were asking for your husband several times. Yes, has anyone around here heard from him lately? Not a word. He must still be in New Orleans. Say, Mrs. Dennis, what horse have you got? I've got two dollars on Baby Mine. Baby Mine? <laughs> to win? Yes, it's got a chance, hasn't it? Well, the odds are 30 to 1 that it won't win. <laughs> Who touted it to you? Nobody. I just had a hunch. Mm, the streets are crowded with people that paid hunches. The third race at Belmont. They're coming up to the tape. Regina's causing a little trouble jockeying for place. 
Body gaze crowding her. They're off. Red Bank in the lead. Lady Bell second. Bonnie Gay giving her a close run. Looks like Red Bank's first corner. And Lady Bell drops back for a neck and neck with Bonnie Gay. Rosita third. Red Bank slows up at the half. Bonnie Gay's out in front now. But there's a dark one plowing ahead down the straightaway. He looks like he means business. Brother, he's coming strong. Baby mine. Oh, and he's my. second at the three quarter, believe it or not. Bonnie Gay's still in the lead. She's losing a little ground, and Baby Mine's right on her tail. He's forging ahead like a cyclone, folks. They're coming down the home stretch. It's nose to nose now, and it's all over. Baby Mine wins oh. by half the length. I win, don't I? Don't I? Yep, you win 60 bucks on a daffy hunch. <laughs> That's what I call beginner's luck. $60. Say, listen, Mrs. Dennis, hunches won't get you any place at all. Next time you want to bet, you come to Marty Hack for a tip, and you'll do yourself all right. Yes, I will. Where do I get my money? Right over there. Thanks. All right, baby. Baby, bye. Sixty to two. Hello. Yes, Belmont, third race. Baby, bye wins. Sixty, thirty, and ten. Our report shows that you have taken more than an hour for lunch every day for two weeks and that you reported ill several afternoons. I had some important business to attend to. It's been a daily occurrence and whatever the nature of the business, you should have realized that the time you gave to it belonged to Mayfields. Oh, I'm sorry. I am more than sorry too, Miss Green, to have to tell you that we shall have to let you go. Honeymoon. Why don't you get married and find out? I suppose you're looking for your girlfriend, Buster. I am. What department is she in now? <laughs> she must be selling apples. They threw her out over a month ago. What? Sure. I heard after her husband gave her the gate, she went on the make for every man in the place. Well, yeah? I always thought she was a playgirl. If you know what I mean. Why, you mug, I ought to let you have it. And stay put! Pardon me. Doesn't Mrs. Dennis live here? Yes, ma'am. At least there's a young thing here who calls herself Mrs. Dennis. And with a good reason, too. What do you mean? Oh, the poor kid. Poor kid's right. Nobody calls on her. And not a sign of a husband. Which is her room? The last one on the right. Thank you. Buster! Oh, oh gee, I'm glad you've come. Pinky and I just got back from our honeymoon. But gee, kid... I'd have come back a lot sooner if I'd known it was anything like this. Oh, it has been kind of lonesome. I've tried to find where you were. i tried to find Wally, too. Doesn't anybody know where he is? Any of his old friends? Mm -mm. The last anyone heard from him, he was in New Orleans, someplace. It was a rat trick to walk out on you. Oh, he didn't walk out on me. I threw him out. Oh, it was my fault. He's still a rat not to come back at a time like this. He, he didn't know. He doesn't know? Then you're a sap. Somebody's wrong. No, and I threw him out. I told him I was through with him and everything that belonged to him. Oh, but he ought to know you didn't mean it. Even Wally ought to know women better than that. If he knew, he'd be here with me. Right now. When are you going to the hospital, kid? Any day now. Which one? County, I guess. That's what it costs to go to a good one. Holy mackerel! Three hundred and five dollars for one baby? You sure that ain't for twins? No. That's three hundred and five dollars for one kid, and I have almost ten of it. Oh, Georgina, I want it to be decent. 
I don't want the kid to be born in a poor house. Ah, oh, Buzz, please, don't. Look. Look, Buzz, look. Look. Here's $50. It's all I got left after the honeymoon. You know how you buy clothes and things. Sure, I know. You take it, Buzz. It won't do you much good, but it'll help some. Oh, thanks. I'm going to run along and see if I can't dig up a little more. But I'll be back tonight. And if you need me in the meantime, call up the Hotel Stratford, will you? Uh-huh. Don't worry. No, I won't. Bye. Oh, gee, you're swell. I hope the kid is half as swell as you are. Oh, forget it. If he's anything like me, I'll spank the pants off of him. Or her. Come in. I thought you might like to look at the evening paper. Oh, thank you. Did you see the lady? Yes, I saw her. Thank you for the paper, Mrs. O'Brien. Well, I must be going. I've got to give Salvador his bath. to win. You're throwing your money away on that, Nash. It's my money. Bet it on baby mine. All right. Anything to please a lady. Fifty bucks on baby mine to win. You're pretty flush today, aren't you? No, it's a dame's money. You don't think I'd be sucker enough to bet on a goat like that, do you? No, I don't. Here it is. Okay. The fourth race at Caliente. They're coming up to the barrier. They're off. Lily Bell's away in front. Lasker on the pole is second. Lily Bell's closing in. She's got the pole in leads at the quarter. Alaska's still second. King John third. Baby Mine fourth. They're going into the back stretch. Alaska coming up. Lily Bell's taking it easy. The jockey's letting Alaska out on the stretch. She's up fighting for the lead at the half. There's a horse coming out of the bunch. It's gaining on the leaders as they get to the three quarters. It's King John going up to fight for the lead. Lily Bell's dropping back. Alaska's leading with King John second. Lily Bell's third. No, she's fourth. Daily Mines third. They're going into the home stretch. Alaska and King John fighting for the lead. But Baby Mines coming through on the pole. She's coming through. Then diving for the finish. The three horses are neck and neck. It looks like it is. Baby Mine. Baby Mine wins. Alaska second. King John third. Hey, your dame wasn't so dumb after all, was she? Ah, uh, just lucky. Well, all my dames are that way. <laughs> Oh, gee, isn't that swell? You don't know what that 500 means to me. Listen, babe, I, I hate to tell you, but, but I did it for your own good. You did what for my own good? Well, I didn't want to see you throw your money away, and, and I had a hot tip on King John. King... So you didn't bet my money on King John? Yeah. But I told you to bet it on baby mine. Yes, I know, but... But why didn't you do what I told you to do? I knew she was going to win. I knew it. Shut up, will you? I won't shut up. I gave you all the money I had in the world to put on that horse, and she won. I needed that money. Well, what are you going to do about it? Here's what she's going to do about it. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Wally. 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 Wally, you're here. Oh, Wally. Wally. 
Wally, don't leave me. Listen, honey, I gotta get you out of here. Wally, don't leave me. But, I don't want you to go. But will you listen to me? The place is pissed. I gotta get I you out, honey. Bus. Bus, baby. Wally. It's Wally. Bus, baby. Bus. Wally. Bus, baby. Uh, who do you think you are? We gotta get an ambulance, quick. What's the matter? You going to collapse? No, it's my wife. We, we gotta get her to the hospital right away. Hey, O'Mara. Call up the Hayes Hospital. Tell them to get a room ready, quick. And O'Mara, send up a stretcher. Now, don't worry, kid. She'll be all right there. My wife's there this very minute. Boss. Boss, baby. Take it easy, son. There's nothing to worry about. I gotta see her. I gotta talk to her. I'm telling you, she'll be all right. I've had six kids myself. And my wife came through all right. It's tough on us men waiting out here, that's all. Oh, brace up. Be a man. Take hold of yourself. Now, ain't I telling you there's nothing to worry about? Hey, doctor. Doctor, is it all over? Is she all right? How is she? Your wife is doing very well. Exceedingly well. For the mother of twins. Twins? Twins? Oh, Doctor, you're a wonder. Congratulations. <laughs> Did you hear that? Twins. Say, can I talk to her for a minute, please? Oh, you can't now. She's going in the delivery room right away. I gotta see her. I gotta tell her something. It'll make it easier for her. Wally. Wally. Oh, Buzz, honey. Wally, you're here. Yeah, I'm here, honey. And I'm going to stick with you this time, always. Wally, don't leave me. Don't leave me for a minute. I'm so afraid. Don't be afraid, honey. It'll be all right. They'll take good care of you. Don't let them touch me, Wally. You won't let them touch me, will you? Everything's going to be all right, honey. Don't you see? Things are breaking swell for us. See, I got back at just the right time. And I got plenty of money, too, Buzz. Say, with luck running like this, we're a cinch. Well, we can't go wrong now, baby. Wally... If I don't come through... There's not going to be any ifs to it. You're coming through perfect. And when I do... It's going to be different with you and me, honey. Not too different. We still love each other just like we used to, won't we? You bet. There won't be anything to make us unhappy this time. Well, we're going to love each other more than ever. <laughs> oh, all I don't want to... Ready now? No. No, Ellie. Yeah, I'm ready. Everything's going to be all right, honey. Yeah, everything's going to be all right, Wally. If I don't come back... You well, will. You got to. Listen, John. I never asked you anything before. I never will again if you just do this. Take care of her. Please. Oh, isn't he beautiful? I mean, isn't she beautiful? I mean, uh, it looks just like you. It's a girl, Pinky. Oh. <laughs> you know, Pinky can never think after the five o'clock whistle blows. <laughs> say, listen, I wouldn't have anything but a girl. But next time, I'll bet you. What, what did you say? I, I mean, I think it'll be a boy. Ah, <laughs> oh, you would say that, don't you? Oh, look, Pink has more hair than you have. Oh, <laughs> Lord, 